Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who are weighed down from of old by slavery beneath the yoke of sin may be set free by the newness of the long-awaited nativity of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord, our justice. Therefore, the days will come, says the Lord, when they shall no longer say, as the Lord lives, who brought the children from Israel out of the land of Egypt, but rather, as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up from the land of the north and from all the lands to which I banished them. They shall again live on their own land. The word of the Lord. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice to the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds. And blessed forever be his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. 
Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. And so the story of Christmas now continues. We began that yesterday with the shift in our readings with uh, the genealogy of Christ from Matthew's Gospel. As we all know, there's only two Gospels that give us some details of the beginnings and the earthly beginnings of Jesus' life in this world, Matthew's Gospel and Luke's Gospel. If we only had Luke's story, our attention would turn immediately to Mary, and very soon we'll be shifting over to Luke's gospel as well in these daily readings. And we'll be hearing from Luke all those blessed experiences of Mary's pregnancy. But Matthew gives us another perspective as well, and obviously these two gospel writers are complementing each other, completing each other, so to speak. Matthew has shown us by the beginning with the genealogy of Christ, which we heard yesterday. So it's also concerned not only with Joseph, but with all of the fathers involved in this story as well. For Matthew, it's very important that Jesus is the son of David, as well as the Son of God, because the Messiah, the Christ, must be both. However, his genealogy also prepares us for a few things, a scandalous birth, as well as a challenge to the woman's husband, Joseph. If we remember from that gospel yesterday, that long list of names, it wasn't all men. There was also a few women mentioned in there as well. If we remember our Old Testament stories, remember Judah. He was one of the 12 sons of Jacob, and he was the father-in-law who was seduced by the disguised Tamar, who was mentioned in that genealogy. When Judah found out that Tamar was with child, he was ready to have her burned to death. It was only when she proved that the child that she carried was his own that he restored her to her rightful place in the family. And therefore, the line continues. Bathsheba, too, she was with child by David. She, remember, was taken by David in a sinful way. She was married to Uriah, the Hittite. The child that she would bear through David would become Solomon, celebrated, of course, for his great wisdom. And he will build the great temple in Jerusalem. And so the messianic line continues. And now today we meet Joseph, who now has a dilemma. He, his betrothed, is with child, and everyone in the community knows that they have not yet come together in marriage. They have not consummated that marriage. But Joseph is a righteous man, one who follows the law, and he is prepared to divorce her quietly. But it is the angel of God that reveals God's wonderful plan to him. And this then draws attention to the real truth about Jesus, the Christ. He is immersed into our very humanity. He himself who is completely without sin 
enters into all this brokenness, even in the family line, so to speak. There is scandal, there is darkness, there is intrigue, there is even sin. And so Jesus becomes one with us in that sin and becomes sin. He becomes our sin, which will be nailed to that cross 33 years later. It is only through Joseph then that Jesus truly can be the son of David, but it is through God and the mighty finger of God that works in all these things that he is Emmanuel, that he is God with us. In this season of hope and expectation, we turn to our loving Father with renewed confidence and offer these petitions for ourselves and others. That guided by the light of Christ, we the church will shine as a beacon of hope for all people. Let us pray. That our brothers and sisters of the world who have separated themselves from God may be graced with finding his love and peace, let us pray. That those too proud to be with their families because of unresolved hurt or anger may find forgiveness and reconciliation, we pray. That our parish community may grow in faith, hope, and love through a commitment to the gospel principles let us pray. And that our beloved deceased, who shared the gift of their faith on earth, may have the joy of eternal life with God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember in this Mass, Mary Jane, Mary Jane Van Tassel, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And also let us remember, as something new I'm trying to do, is remembering all of the deceased priests of our diocese. And on this day, way back in uh, 1893, a father, William P. Honeyman, passed away, who served the Diocese of Green Bay. We pray for his repose of his soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, fulfillment of all our hopes, grant what we ask for in faith. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.